This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Guatemala, Jimmy Morales, a right-leaning former television comedian with no government experience, won the presidency after less than half of eligible voters cast ballots Sunday. Morales received 67 percent of the vote, more than double the votes cast for his contender, the ex-First Lady, Sandra Torres. The election comes after massive popular protests ousted former President Otto Pérez Molina in September. Pérez Molina is now in jail, facing corruption charges. President-elect Jimmy Morales is well known for a starring role in a long-running sketch comedy show, which often featured lewd sketches that some have criticized as being homophobic and sexist. But little is known about Morales's political platform, although he has unveiled a handful of eccentric proposals, such as tagging teachers with GPS trackers to ensure they attend classes. He celebrated his victory Sunday. Hoy hemos sido bendecidos con un hermoso día. We've been blessed today with a beautiful day. Let us do everything in our power so that the next few years will also be the best for Guatemala. Because constructing Guatemala isn't a job just for one man, nor two men. It's a job for each and every citizen of this great nation. For more, we go to Guatemala, where we're going to continue our conversation with journalist Alan Nairn, who's been covering Guatemala since the 1980s. He's in Guatemala City right now. Alan, what is most important to understand about what's just taken place in Guatemala? Well, Guatemala has been in the middle of a popular uprising, uh, which brought down the, uh, the former president, General Pérez Molina, who was an officer implicated in the, uh, the massacres in the Altiplano. Uh, and in a sense, this election was just an interruption uh, of that uprising, uh, probably a temporary interruption. Uh, uh, as, as many Guatemalans have said, they have a chance to vote but not to choose, because if someone wanted to vote against the system, there was no option on the ballot. Uh, both candidates uh, came out of the oligarchy. Uh, uh, one in particular, Sandra Torres, had special backing from the narcotics syndicates in the past. Jimmy Morales had special backing from the army uh, massacre officers. Uh, as he celebrated his victory, uh, sitting next to him, sitting next to him was Colonel Ovalle Maldonado. Uh, who used to be at the Koban military base, where they've so far discovered more than 500 corpses, uh, many of them women and children, who were executed uh, by the army, as Ovaya Maldonado and General Miranda Trejo, another of Jimmy's key people, uh, were there. Uh, he, the founder of Jimmy's political party, General Kukilo Ayuso, said explicitly that the party was founded in order to protect officers from prosecution. And he also said, I kill anyone I want. Uh, so the army is still in the palace, as they were under Pérez Molina. But now, in a sense, that palace is... Let me go, uh, uh, as we fix the uh, video feed to Guatemala, to an interview from prison um, with the jailed ex-president Otto Pérez Molina, claiming that Vice President Joe Biden threatened to cut off U.S. aid to Guatemala unless Molina allowed the corruption probe to continue. Vice President Biden didn't just tell me that it was practically a condition. The way he handled it was to convince the U.S. Congress that if we don't have the International Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala, support will not be forthcoming for the Plan Alianza for Prosperity. President Pérez Molina, who went on to say that the U.S. ambassador had demanded he ask for a public resignation of Guatemala's former vice president, Roshana Baldetti. I told the Guatemalan foreign minister, look, foreign minister, do me a favor and tell this gentleman, the U.S. ambassador in Guatemala, that he needs to understand what his job is here. He is an ambassador not the country's president, and their desire to put conditions, wanting to ask for ministers to change, asking that I publicly ask for the resignation of the vice president, I told him I wouldn't do it. Mm, vice President Baldetti resigned amidst the corruption scandal in May. Alan Aaron, if you could comment on this. Well, uh, Pettis Molina was Washington's uh, man for, uh, for decades. Uh, he was trained at the School of the Americas. He was on the CIA payroll when he ran the G2 military intelligence uh, hit squad. 
Uh, the U.S. was telling him not to resign as the people were in the streets demanding his resignation and as the prosecutors were trying to indict him for corruption. Uh, now in prison as a pariah, uh, he's trying to rebuild himself as a, suddenly as a, as a nationalist. And he's become kind of a national joke in Guatemala because everyone knows that he was Washington's man. And suddenly now he's trying to blame his plight on the U.S. He was basically asking Washington to step in and save him as he was about to be toppled. But uh, that, that didn't work out for him. Uh, but the important point is that uh, there's, a, there's this popular movement. Uh, and now the army is even more strongly in the palace. The most, uh, uh, the, the soldiers with the most, the officers with the most blood in their blood on their hands surround Jimmy Morales. These are the people who've been involved in massacres like those of uh, Coban, Rio Negro, Dos Eres, uh, countless others. Uh, Jimmy should uh, be willing, if he claims to be a new politician, to prosecute all these officers, to bring them to justice, and also. Uh, to prosecute the U.S. Uh, CIA and military people who were working uh, hand in glove with them. There's a danger of increased repression now, uh, again, especially in the countryside, against uh, Guatemalan grassroots activists who were uh, brave enough to stand up against the U.S. and Canadian mining companies uh, and against uh, uh, environmental abuses by corrupt officials. A number of them have been murdered in recent years, and many of these murders have been done by private security corporations uh, uh, that are contracted to the oligarchs, to the foreign investors, and to narcotics syndicates. And these are precisely the people uh, that are now surrounding Jimmy Morales. Uh, very quickly, Alan, you interviewed Otto Perez Molina before he was president, more than 20 years ago, in the highlands of Guatemala, as you stood over dead bodies. Um, you talk about him as being a massacre president. Will Jimmy Morales be open to the prosecution of these generals, many of whom you say support him? Uh, well, uh, probably not, because they're his uh, people. But. Uh, many people thought when they went to the polls, because that was his propaganda, and that's what the Guatemalan corporate press let him get away with, that they were voting, voting for someone who was a little newer. Uh, uh, if he is, in fact, uh, different than the previous, uh, he should allow such prosecutions. Uh, but uh, his money, uh, his political backing comes from the massacre, uh, comes from the massacre officers. What people say in the street is, yeah, uh, they're all thieves. But at least Jimmy hasn't had the chance to steal yet. So maybe that's better than someone like Sandra, who, uh, who was the other candidate, who had already been in, uh, in office and had, and had proven to be corrupt. The popular movement, though, has two key weaknesses. Uh, one, they have yet to move beyond the issue of corruption to the is issue of massacre. And two, uh, it has yet to broaden uh, widely uh, to the Mayan heartland. The Mayan population makes up half uh, of, of the surviving Guatemalan population. The, uh, the political elite of Guatemala, uh, in particular the military and death squad elements who surround Jimmy, are viciously racist against the, uh, the Mayan population. Uh, if, if the Mayan population uh, uh, becomes uh, a part, uh, uh, an even larger part of, uh, of the uprising, and they go to the streets, uh, this government, too, can be shaken. Uh, there was an extraordinary scene in uh, one of the national TV debates sponsored by the corporate press between uh, a debate between Jimmy and Sandra, his opponent. Uh, the moderator asked both candidates, if the people go to the streets to resign. Now, uh, that question was an acknowledgment of the power and legitimacy of the movement, and it's also the kind of question that would be inconceivable in, say, a U.S. presidential debate. Alan Aaron, I want to thank you for being with us, journalist and activist reporting to us from Guatemala City. He's been covering Guatemala since the 1980s. You can follow him on Twitter at Alan Aaron 14 for the latest news. This is Democracy Now! Uh, later in the broadcast, we're going to Oxford, Mississippi. The University of Mississippi has taken down the Confederate flag. Well, it's the Mississippi flag with a Confederate battle flag within it. Students protested, and the university has just complied. But first, we'll be speaking with the Nobel Prize-winning economist Joe Stiglitz. Stay with us.